Welcome to the Crystal Rail Network College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as the facilitator for our, our college fair today. Before we get started, I have a few opening announcements. The first announcement, your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists are unable to see or hear you. Second announcement, you can use that Q&A feature in Zoom to type your questions to our presenters at any point throughout our session today. I also want to share that this is just one of a few different sessions that we're offering, so feel free to visit our registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded, and you can access this recording by visiting the website on the screen. With all of that said, I want to go ahead and turn it over to our first presenter from Mississippi State University. Thank you, Jasmine. I'm going to work to get this up for you all. Um, so as Jasmine said, uh, my name is Grant Nairn with Mississippi State University. I am one of the assistant directors of recruitment. Um, been with the university for over eight years in terms of recruitment and attended there for undergrad and graduate school as well. So uh, first and foremost, thank you uh, for joining us to learn just a little bit about what Mississippi State can offer you. So first, I'm going to give you uh, an overview of what you can expect with the university, if I can figure out how to figure this out. Uh-oh. It's playing games with me. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Um, so we are a Southeastern Conference school. So we are one of the 14 member institutions in the Southeastern Conference, the SEC. We do have 23,000 students enrolled on our campus. So we are a fairly large public institution, but we still provide you with very close and intimate learning environments with a 17 to one student faculty ratio. So when I'm talking to students, I, I make sure that they realize that they can get the best of both because we're part of the SEC, but we're still on the smaller end of the SEC. We're the third smallest school out of the 14 member institutions. Uh, we do compromise of 65% of in-state students and 35% out-of-state students. So we are seeing uh, the university grow and kind of reach outside uh, of the Southeast a little bit as well. We do offer a Shackles Honors College. We're going to talk a little bit about, about the academics. Uh, so if you're interested in Honors College route, uh, we do offer this to students and it's um, it's kind of a different process to where students can apply um, and it doesn't, you don't have to necessarily meet certain metrics uh, for acceptance. You see those that are listed on your screen, those you have to meet to get an automatic invitation, but outside of those metrics, you can apply and be considered and reviewed holistically. So we encourage students just to kind of think about that opportunity. If that's something you want to take advantage of, definitely encourage you to do that with us. So we offer over 180 different majors. We have a lot of academic programs with study for students within eight different academic colleges. So we're just going to hit on a few of those. What we're vastly known for throughout the nation uh, is our College of Agriculture. We're number 14 in terms of agricultural research. So anything dealing um, within the field of agriculture. Um, we also have a College of Architecture, Art, and Design. We are a top 25 program in all of North America for School of Architecture. So all of these programs within this academic college are studio-based because you're hands-on learners. So uh, we want to facilitate that and make sure you're successful uh, pursuing what, you, what your passion is. And so that's a fantastic program. We also have the College of Arts and Sciences. I joke and say that it's anything ending in ology, um, but Really, we do have a lot of great programs like communications, PR, biology, uh, zoology, psychology, sociology, and then also anthropology, which is a really cool and unique program, um, and then also meteorology. Fun fact for you, one in three of the nation's meteorologists actually have their certification from Mississippi State University, which is really cool. We also have a college of business. Uh, as most institutions, you can probably find all of your traditional business degree programs. Uh, so some specific ones with us are our international business program, the professional golf management program, and then we can even offer you an entrepreneurship minor. Uh, so we're actually number six for entrepreneurship research. And so that's something I just want to make sure you're aware of at those opportunities that do exist. 
We do have a college of education with your traditional education majors uh, with the tacked on opportunity for kinesiology within that academic college as well. We also are founded on the basis of engineering, everything from aerospace all the way down to software and petroleum engineering and everything in between. Um, the biggest thing within this academic college is that we encourage students to get involved in co-op and internship opportunities. And 93% of the students who go through that program actually have a job prior to graduation, which is really great. We then offer the College of Veterinary Medicine program. There are only 36 vet schools in the entire country, and Mississippi State is one of those. We do offer an early entry vet program to rising seniors, so if that's something you're kind of interested in pursuing, we definitely encourage you to check us out. We also offer the College of Forest Resources. Uh, we've seen the biggest majors and degree programs with that college being environmental conservation and then aquaculture. So we want to get you to Mississippi State. We want to make sure you're successful uh, during your time during Mississippi State. So we have a lot of resources instituted to make sure that that happens. You can see a few of those listed on your screen with a whole bunch of other opportunities to get involved during your time here with us. Like I said earlier, we are in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, so a lot of that comes with the athletics and the rah-rah and the camaraderie that comes with that. We actually have a game this evening. So tune in if you're interested. Uh, we'll be playing the Wrath of Alabama. Um, but uh, so we have a lot of great options for students, and this is a great way for students to get involved. We also have student organizations, over 350 different student organizations to where you, if athletics isn't your thing, I can guarantee you can find something to make it your home away from home. So we are located in Starkville, Mississippi, as you can see on your screen. It is a quaint, small, rural college town. Uh, so we definitely have a lot of great options for students to make it their home away from home very quickly. We are a part of the Common Out. You do have our institutional application as well, so you can apply either one of those directions, uh, whichever one is easiest for you. We do practice rolling admissions, so you can apply at any point throughout the year um, without having any type of deadline placed on you. This will show you everything we need. We are test optional, so those will be um, considered, but not a deal breaker. Just going to flash this up here, and then I am going to hand it over to my colleague. Thank you, Grant. Our next presenter is from the University of Dallas. And Natalie, you are muted. Thank you so much for telling me, Jasmine. <laughs> Already off to a great start. Well, thank you so much for your time and attention today. My name is Natalie Williams, and I am a college admission counselor for the University of Dallas. I currently serve Denton, Fort Worth, as well as all homeschoolers, and I'm here to talk about our academics, our faith, and our fun at the University of Dallas. So we are a uh, small Catholic liberal arts university in Irving, Texas, which is just outside the city of Dallas. Um, and our point of pride is our core curriculum. We really focus on giving everyone the same kind of education and the same kind of foundational education so that they can really grow regardless of their major. Um, so uh, like it says up here, there on the screen, um, we are enthusiastically Catholic and we have a second semester in Rome for all students to go to, um, again, regardless of major, so that they can have that, again, that holistic education. So every uh, single student takes the same uh, literature, philosophy, theology, history courses, as well as math and science, fine art, foreign language, politics, economics. I, I tell students it's a lot, but it's a little bit of a lot so that you can really become the best version of yourself through constant dialogue with your professors and with your classmates. I say small. Um, we have about 1,500 undergraduates here at the University of Dallas, so that's uh, big enough that you're meeting new people all four years or five years if you choose to do a master's program, um, but small enough that you know pretty much everyone's faces, if not their names. Um, so a little more about the core curriculum. We focus on the great books. Like I said, it's about 19 courses and 60 credit hours. All students participate, which is really great, especially for um, students of completely different majors. So English majors and biology majors, business majors, psychology majors, everyone takes the same literary traditions one class. Um, so the Odyssey, the 
Republic of Plato, the Iliad that you see here on the screen, um, St. Augustine's Confessions. Everyone has the opportunity to take those classes together and to, in, uh, to engage in the same dialogue, which is all, you know, it's the same in that we're all reading the same books and we're all going through the same pace, but it's, it's different in that everyone has the opportunity to put their own spin on it. And um, you can take your core in two years straight if you want to, or you can spread it throughout all four years because at UD, you don't have to declare your major until junior year. So you can take core classes, go to Rome, and then um, take all of your major classes. Or if you're a double major like myself, you can start on those major classes right away. Um, I study French and art history, and I think I really got the best of both worlds with uh, my majors and of course with the core classes. Uh, the Rome program, like I mentioned, is available to all students. We have a fall and spring and now a summer semester. Um, it, it's on our Dewey Santi campus. Dewey Santi means two saints. It's um, supposedly the site where Saints Peter and Paul met. There's a well that legend has it. They actually met there and spoke there. Um, you take five core classes. So it's um, Greek, uh, Greek plays and Shakespeare plays, um, art and architecture of Rome, Western civilization one, which is ancient Greece and ancient Rome, Western theological traditions and philosophy of the human person. And while you're on the Rome campus with about a hundred other of your closest friends, um, you get to travel both with the school and outside of the school. So you go to uh, Siena, Assisi, Florence, Venice, Pompeii, the Amalfi Coast with the school, as well as Greece for 10 days. Um, everyone takes the same Greece trip and then you get independent travel time as well. So four long weekends where you go wherever you want, um, as well as a 10 day break where the campus literally kicks you off and they tell you, we don't want to see your face for 10 days. Go have some adventures and call us if you need help. Um, like I mentioned before, we are enthusiastically Catholic. We are very strongly Catholic. 80% of our students identify as Catholic and that's, um, you know, the Roman Catholic faith. It's, um, there's opportunity to practice the sacraments on camp campus. That being said, um, we don't uh, require any specific religious tests. You don't have to be Catholic to come here. About 20% of our students are not Catholic and they still feel comfortable engaging in uh, the dialogue here and engaging in the classes. Uh, what's there to do for fun? Um, you can see a list of really great uh, things to do for fun on campus as well as off of campus. Personally, my favorite was charity week. So um, the junior class would get together and raise money. Um, put on all sorts of crazy events. So definitely ask me more about Charity Week because I, I could talk all day about that. Um, DFW Metroplex, Metroplex, like I said, um, we're right outside the city of Dallas. So you have lots of opportunity to go to the cultural district in downtown Dallas or um, talk to companies about internships because we do set you up for success and you can get an internship at a really great institution uh, the summer between your freshman and sophomore year. So you don't have to wait. Um, life after graduation, like I said, there are lots of opportunities for internships, job fairs. We have our very own office that helps students um, get jobs and internships both after graduation and as alumni. Um, and then the admission process, you can apply through Common App or apply Texas. Um, you will need a counselor letter of recommendation, a high school transcript, and we are test optional this year. So you can send us your scores if you want to, but they do not impact scholarship or admission decisions. Um, and you can, if you apply before November 1st, you can waive the $50 application fee. Um, we also offer really great merit scholarships. I'm running out of time here. Um, and you can take a look at this, uh, this timeline here. Thank you, Natalie. Our next presenter is from the University of Denver. All right, hello everyone. Let me just share my screen. All right, hopefully you all can see that. Um, hello, my name is AJ Lee and um, I'm an assistant director of, uh, of admission here at the University of Denver. Um, thank you uh, for joining us um, on your Saturday and uh, we'd love uh, for you uh, to connect with you. So uh, thank you for uh, joining us. So I'm um, just going to get started here. So uh, the University of Denver was founded in 1864. Um, so very well established in uh, the uh, Colorado and the Denver area. And one of the great things about uh, DU is that we have uh, 
uh, small class sizes, uh, and we do have uh, like a medium sized institution. So you'll uh, have uh, the resources of a big university, but you'll, you'll still have the uh, small class sizes uh, with your professors being able to collaborate with them. We have a 12, uh, 12 to one student to faculty ratio, and uh, nearly all of our classes are taught by uh, professors. So great um, research opportunities and um, uh, great ways for you to uh, really uh, be connected with your professors and really be connected with uh, the academics and uh, the things that you're learning. About five, uh, uh, 1,500 students come incoming for our first year, uh, first year and transfer students. Uh, we have a, a total undergraduate population of about 5,000 uh, students and about uh, 7,000 graduate students. But um, a lot of our programs and our activities are going to be geared towards that undergraduate population. So uh, if you're like me that went to grad school at the University of Denver, uh, all we do is just go to uh, work, uh, go to school, and just go home, right? So all those activities, everything else is going to be uh, geared uh, to uh, you and that um, undergraduate population. So a lot of great um, activities that uh, you uh, can see <clears throat> uh, on campus. And uh, these are just our academic divisions. We have five five of them. Uh, we have our Arts of uh, Humanities and Social Sciences, uh, the Joseph Corbell uh, uh, School of International Studies, Daniels College of Business, uh, College of Natural uh, Sciences and Mathematics, and uh, the Daniel Felix Ritchie School of Engineering and Computer Science. So just a lot of uh, different majors and minors and concentrations that you can do. Uh, you don't have to uh, come in uh, knowing what you want to major. You could definitely just come in undeclared and uh, it's totally fine because uh, you don't have to declare your major until the end of your second year. So there's a lot of time. There's a lot of uh, space for you to uh, really uh, go into different academic areas, different disciplines to really see uh, what you want to go into and what you want to uh, major in. <clears throat> and we also have great uh, dual degree programs and pre-professional advising. So if you want to go into the medical field, if you want to go into the health profession, if you want to go into law, uh, anything like that, uh, we do have pre-professional advising for uh, those um, courses and uh, those uh, pathways. And also we have dual degree programs, which is uh, three plus two programs or four plus one programs where you could get your uh, bachelor's degree and a master's degree in five years. So a lot of great opportunities in terms of where you can excel um, academically uh, when you do come here to DU. Uh, so little thing, uh, so the thing that makes us a little bit uh, unique is we are on the quarter system. So instead of two 15 week semesters, we have three 10 week quarters. So you have, you have your fall, winter and spring quarter. And I know three does add up to four. So we do have that summer quarter and that's optional. That's where our students will usually take uh, that time to have their summer breaks and things like that. But if you want to take uh, classes during that summertime, uh, that's going to be extra and additional to your um, uh, to your uh, tuition. Uh, but a really great thing about the quarter system is we have a six week winter break, a lot of great things that you could do during that time. Uh, DU students are very popular during that time to get um, internships uh, and uh, to really um, uh, really get to have that time to be able to commit to that internship. So you could have like a three week break uh, and you'll still have three weeks um, of, a, of an internship and being able to have those um, experiences. And if you're not uh, coming from Colorado, you can um, uh, just go back home, spend all that time with family. That's just one ticket home. You don't have to go uh, back and forth for different uh, winter holidays and uh, things like that. So a uh, really great uh, schedule for our students and uh, it really works uh, well with them. And this is actually one of my uh, favorite shots of campus. You can really see um, everything from uh, all, all, all of the trees that we have on campus and the uh, beautiful architecture. And you can see uh, Denver and the mountains out in the distance as well. Uh, there's no better place in Colorado. I love Colorado. I was uh, born and raised there. Uh, and uh, the secret's out. Everyone knows about Colorado and they know that it's the best place to be. So uh, 300 days of sunshine. Uh, 150 acres of just a uh, gorgeous green campus right now it's really beautiful with the leaves changing so uh, every season is picturesque a uh, very beautiful campus i love it uh, so please uh, stop by uh, and join uh, join us and uh, visit us to uh, really see our campus but uh, there's a lot of great advantages to being close to denver we're not we have our own space where we are uh, only 15 minutes away and uh, we do have a light rail station uh, and other places for you to um, uh, be able to go around that Denver metro area so uh, it's really great uh, for all of our students even though you don't have a car uh, that's uh, that's totally fine the uh, public transportation is uh, really good <clears throat> um, as well and I uh, and then uh, the other uh, great thing about 
uh, uh, the University of Denver is that we are ranked uh, second in the nation for uh, the percentage of students that we do send abroad. Uh, we have over 120, par uh, 120 partner programs across 52 different countries. So a lot of great things that you can do there. And whatever you're paying at the University of Denver, uh, you'll be paying that same price wherever you go. Uh, if you go, uh, go and study abroad with us your fall uh, junior or senior year. So uh, there's no additional cost for you to study abroad. If you study abroad uh, during that fall time, we'll pay for your plane ticket, your visa, your passport, all those different travel expenses. We'll pay for all that. And uh, you could go study abroad with no additional cost. So a really great program for our students. And then this is just uh, just that admission financial aid and timeline. Our early action is November 1st and January 15th. I know I'm running out of time, so uh, just going to be uh, rushing through this. Uh, but if you do have any questions, please let me know. Uh, uh, give me an email. Give me a call. And uh, we'd love to connect with you and start that conversation with you. So thank you. Thank you, AJ. Our next presenter is from St. Mary. I'm sorry, University of San Francis. Thank you, Jasmine. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Alex Campos from the University of St. Francis. I'm the Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions here at the university. Uh, thank you all for joining us on, on your Saturday afternoon. You know, I'm kind of happy to see that you're willing to sit down and actually try to figure out what your next steps in life are going to be. So the University of St. Francis, we're a small little liberal arts school uh, in Joliet, Illinois. So we roughly about have 1,700 students on campus. Uh, so kind of similar to some of the other institutions here, we do have that offer that little small faculty uh, to student ratio. And for me, the smallest class that I had when I was a student there was five students in it. And it was pretty nice because I was able to have those conversations with my professor. We went out to dinner for class and we actually had our conversation uh, while I was while we were there. The next biggest part that I love the most is that we do have 52 different majors. The top five is nursing. Uh, the nice part with our nursing program is the moment that you apply to the university, you actually are applying towards the nursing program. And once you are accepted, you do have a seat waiting for you your sophomore year, second semester. You actually roll right into the nursing program. From there, we uh, the next biggest program is our education program. Uh, there's really not one particular program I can tell you in there that actually has you know, which one to go into. The reason why is that you're going to have three and a half years with a teaching experience. So think about it. Your first semester freshman year is the only time you're not student teaching. After your first semester is done, you move right in and you start student teaching, you shadow, and then you go forward. Okay. The third biggest program we have is our College of Business. Same kind of, same kind of issues, thing with uh, the College of Education is that you actually get to have a well-rounded business degree meaning that if you wanna be a manager someday, you're gonna take classes in accounting, you're gonna take business law, you're gonna take technology, you're gonna take marketing, you're gonna take finance, right? We wanna make you a well-rounded well business degree, okay? The fourth biggest major is our biology program, and that's all your pre-medical professors, like pre-med, pre-athletic training, pre-physical therapy, pre-occupational therapy. The fifth biggest one is typically a toss-up because it's always between psychology, criminal justice, social work, so those are the big three that always are vying for the fifth spot. But the biggest one and probably the most unique one that we do have is a called Digital Audio Recording Arts. What that Digital Audio and Recording Arts program does is essentially if you want to learn how to make and mix your own music, you will learn how to do that, right? If you want to record yourself and put yourself out on iTunes and Spotify, you will teach you how to do that. If you want to break it into the music industry, we'll teach you that. So it's a very nice, unique program that we have seen a lot of people go into. The program director's son actually works with Chance the Rapper, and that's actually his, his job. He gets to work with him every day, and he's been traveling the country. So we are roughly about an hour away from Chicago or Southwest, right? But you, are, you can jump on the train, and it'll take you back and forth. We're the last stop on two different trains. Uh, if you decide to take the car, it's about 45 minutes, but the traffic with Chicago, I like to say it's an hour. But we do like to have that chance uh, with being able to have access to the to Chicago without having to deal with that traffic, that without having to, you know, deal with the hustle and bustle every day. You can always come back here to St. Francis and have that quiet atmosphere. 
Now, for my athletes that are in the group, okay, we do have a athletic program, right, listed that you can see on here are the different teams. We are part of the NAIA. So what's unique with being a part of the NAIA, we're, we can actually give you both an academic and an athletic scholarship at the same time. So you'll actually be able to get both, right? Majority of our teams are very well known. The two biggest well-known programs that we do have are both men's and women's track and cross country. Uh, both teams typically within the last five years have always been ranked in the top 10 to top 15 in the nation. As far as financial assistance goes, 100% of our incoming freshmen do receive some type of financial aid, right? Typically, and the nice part for those of you coming from Cristo Rey, which is a Catholic uh, network, to a Catholic university like University of St. Francis, you actually do receive a $3,000 scholarship in addition to your academic aid. Uh, if you look down on the bottom there, there's 16 countries that are represented by our international students. Now, as far as studying abroad, I like to ask you, I like to ask students the questions, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? And what St. Francis will do, we'll be able to help you find that country, find a university that's willing to take you there. And you can stay for two weeks, you can stay for a semester, or you can try to stay for a whole year, and we'll still be able to get you to graduation. Speaking of graduation, all right, after school, 98% of our graduates have a job within six months. Those of you that are thinking about going into nursing, 90% of our students pass the NCLEX on the first try. For those of you wanting to be a teacher, 100% pass the boards. And then for those that are thinking about maybe going into the allied health or the physician assistance program, you can see the, uh, the pass rates there. But again, 98% of our graduates do move on to some other institution or have a job in their field. So this is kind of the process. We are on the Common App or you can apply on our website. Uh, we are completely free, so you don't have to worry about paying uh, any application fees. Okay, all we're looking for is your high school transcripts. We are completely test optional. If you do want to submit your test scores, that's totally fine too, but we are completely test optional, right? If you're eligible for a FAFSA, we can go ahead and submit that. If you're not eligible for FAFSA, that's okay. Our goal is to help you make school affordable so then you can focus on your education, right? Then the last part, you just commit to USF, come on down. I definitely recommend coming for a visit, see what campus is like. Right. I want you to see what we have to offer you as a student. Right. You get a chance to work with myself for four years. Right. If you're a junior, five years, you can come sit down in my office. Let's work on a schedule together. My goal is to make college, you know, nice, easy, and a transition that you had. Okay. This is my contact information. You know, I do, I do want to hear back from you, right? Please don't hesitate to reach out again. That's what I'm here for. My goal is to help you have a plan after college, okay? I want to be able to help you find your goal, find your vision, right? And let's make that a reality for you, right? That's what we do really well at the universities. That we, do, we are that small campus that you'll have a chance to talk to anybody from the janitor who wants to get to know you to the president of the university that wants to see you walk across that stage, Okay. Again, any of these people that are listed on here, we're all willing to help you out throughout this entire process. And I'll go ahead and I'll turn it over to my next colleague. Thank you. Our next presenter is from St. Mary's University of Minnesota. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, so my name is Allie Borowski. I'm from St. Mary's University of Minnesota. I actually graduated from St. Mary's in 2018. Um, I also um, have been working there for about four years. So I'm really excited to get to talk to you today. Um, so just a little bit about our tradition and history. We are a private liberal arts college. We are Roman Catholic and we are also a Lasallian institution. Um, a bit about our student profile. We have about a thousand undergraduate students. Um, we are strictly an undergraduate campus um, in Winona. Um, we do have a grad program through our Minneapolis campus. Our student um, ratio, male, female, is about 46, 54, um, but really about 50, 50. Our average class size is around 16 students, and that is actually capped off at about 25. So you will not have a class bigger than that. 
All of our classes are taught by professors, um, so you'll never see any TAs in the classroom. And about 32% of our students are student athletes. Um, so we're really kind of heavy in student involvement, which I'll kind of talk a little bit more later. When it comes to academics, we have about 26 different majors with different tracks that are related to certain majors, um, which really helps our students kind of be mission focused and career focused. Um, that's something that our kind of most popular majors would be biology, health sciences, psychology, um, criminal justice, business um, in sort of different degrees, and then also um, our education program, whether elementary education or secondary education. Um, that's something that we do actually have two premier programs, which are direct admit programs, one being our three plus two physician assistant program that's directly associated with Mayo Clinic, and then also our nursing program. Both of those programs would be stuff that you would know prior to starting your first day freshman year. We also have a lot of student services on campuses, on our campus, so that's something that tutoring service, um, academic advising, as well as guided study, also access services. So if you ever need any academic accommodations, that's definitely a great option. Um, we're located in Winona, Minnesota, like I know, uh, said. Um, we're a small, private, kind of really close-knit community up on kind of Highway 14 in town. Um, that's something that 90% of our students live on campus all four years. Um, we do require students to live on campus, at least the first two, but for a lot of our students, they choose to stay on campus all four years. We have about 450 acres of land, so a lot of outdoor recreation opportunities, which includes about 12, uh, 10 plus miles of hiking trails, as well as our trout stream that runs through campus, disc golf course, and then also cross country skiing during the winter. Um, so a lot of great opportunities on campus, but we also in downtown Winona have a lot of cafes, shops, restaurants, as well as movie theater, bowling alley, um, art museum. So a lot of uh, different opportunities for students, both on campus and off. When it comes to student involvement, like I mentioned earlier, 80% of our students are participating in something on campus. Um, we have about four, 50 different clubs for our students to choose from um, that kind of span a wide variety of options from academic to multicultural service, um, special interests. For example, we have a video game club. So we have really a lot of different options for our students. Um, I'd say our two biggest clubs are probably our student activities committee, which would be the planning committee for everything on campus. And then our student senate for especially a lot of students that um, maybe were involved in student government in high school. Um, it's the same kind of concept with our students trying to make changes on campus. Um, we also have a lot of campus ministry um, involved uh, clubs as well as recreation clubs like I talked about. And then two different kind of study abroad opportunities, short term and long term. Um, short term is kind of unique to us. Um, that's something that you would take a six week course on our campus and then at the end of that six weeks you actually go to that place that you studied about and there actually doesn't need to be any learning involved. So it's a lot of fun that you get to go and explore the place that you already learned about. We have 17 NCAA Division III sports. So we are heavy, like I said, student athlete wise. So we focus on our students being able to both graduate in four years and also still play the sport that they love. Um, that's something that we also, for students that aren't interested in varsity athletics, have seven club sport opportunities as well as five different intramural sessions for our students to choose with um, kind of different competitive levels. The club sports will still obviously compete with outside places, um, whereas intramurals is kind of all in-house within our student body, um, getting a group of friends together and gonna have fun. When it comes to our application, it is free, it is open now. We are on rolling admission, um, so it's never too late or too early to apply. Our scholarships are actually determined through your, your application, so there's no separate application that needs to be completed. Um, those range between merit scholarships, um, Catholic high school um, grants, as well as a visit scholarship. Um, so if you come and visit your senior year of high school, or if you're a transfer student a year prior to you starting at our school, you get a $1,000 visit scholarship that's renewable all four years on campus. Um, and any outside scholarships you apply for, we'll always stack that on top of any of the institutional aid we will give you. Um, and it's also never too early to start your FAFSA. That's something that um, when it comes to a full financial aid package, we send those out come mid-January. Um, and as counselors, we really kind of take the time and um, kind of assistance of going through those um, one by one. So it's really individual process for all of our students. 
When it comes to outcomes, that's something that about 70% of our students will complete a research or creative project within their four years. Um, it's just a really nice kind of setup for if students want to go on to grad school. And then about 92% of our students are employed in graduate school in the military or some sort of long-term volunteering within one year of graduation. And at the bottom right, we have a bunch of lists um, of where our students have gone. That's not the whole list and we have a lot more. Thank you. Thank you, Allie. We're now gonna transition to the Q&A portion of our session today. I wanna to encourage all of our presenters to return. Feel free to turn on your camera and I will pose a question to the group. Our presenters will respond to the question in the order in which they present it. The question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college admissions process? So we'll start with Mississippi State University. Thank you. That is actually a really good question. Um, and I feel like much of like my colleagues all on the screen, you might hear similar answers, but just to know it, it is a process, but also you're going to land where you're supposed to land. Um, and so don't be afraid to talk with us and communicate with us because we, we're here to help you. I hate to use the word recruiters because I feel like that's a nasty word. Um, we're really here to help kind of navigate and help you figure out what is most suitable for you because we're all in the court of you. Um, and so when we're going throughout this process, just be open, communicate, and just know that we all are in your court. Yeah, I would say it's definitely really important to visit the campus and sit in on classes in particular, um, especially when you're trying to figure out where you're going to be for the next um, four years or two years if you're transferring. Um, however long you're going to be at a university, it's important that you spend a day in the life of a student and you actually visit the campus and visit the classes as well. Um, when I was uh, trying to decide where I wanted to go to college. I sat in on multiple classes and I talked to multiple students and it was uh, talking with them and having those conversations that really convinced me that the University of Dallas was my home. And that is um, like uh, Grant mentioned, you know, we're uh, somewhat recruiters, salesmen, whatever. Um, I don't see myself in that position. I see myself as someone who's trying to find a home for you. Um, and trying to find where you will be most comfortable and most excited to learn. Yeah, I would just say, um, take a breath and just really just, you know, breathe. And, uh, you know, I know that this application process is very stressful and, you know, there's a lot of uh, unknowns that are in the air, but um, honestly, try to have fun with this. I think this is a great time for you to really show off who you are and uh you know all the things that you've been do doing um uh throughout you know all your school years for you know 12 years so like really be proud of what you have uh, accomplished uh really show and um make your personality uh shine through your essay and that's like the best place where we can really uh, uh see your personality and see your passions and uh, who you are so uh, instead of thinking of this as a, a really negative thing a really scary thing like have fun with it really embrace it and uh yeah just uh take some time to yourself to um really make sure that um you're taking care of yourself emotionally and mentally as well so uh yeah just breathe no uh, you'll be fine yeah, I, I want to have to ditto everything that everybody else had said, but probably the biggest thing, too, is be open and honest with all of us. Again, we're, we're here to help you throughout this process. And if you have like questions, don't hesitate. Reach out, because you if you have that question, there might be other students and other of your friends that aren't willing to ask that same question. Uh, again, we're here. That's what we're here for. If you don't tell us like, hey, Alex, like, I need help with some, I need help with getting financial aid. Okay, let's sit down, let's work on it. Cause I guarantee you, every one of us knows where extra scholarships are at or extra money. We know, okay, hey, go reach out to this company right now. Or here, there's, there's this scholarship that you should apply for. If you don't ask us, we can't help you. So that'd probably be my biggest thing is definitely be open and honest with us. Tell us, have fun with it, but also tell us your story so we can help you and best advocate for you later too. Um, I think also another thing is to not have 
to worry about having everything figured out like right this second as everyone's kind of saying it's a process there's a lot of time you don't have to have everything kind of figured out as you're graduating high school or even as a college freshman or sometimes even a sophomore everything doesn't have to be figured out in an instant and again it's a process so kind of taking it day by day new things will come up again visiting um, as many places as you possibly can because that's the best way that you're going to say hey this is the school that i want to go to and really without visiting kind of hard to really figure that out thank you all great advice from the group we are approaching the end of our virtual college fair but i do have a few closing announcements as you exit from this Zoom session, a survey will appear. It's approximately five questions or so, but please, please complete the survey. It's extremely helpful as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. I also want to remind you that you can sign up for additional sessions. And finally, you can access this recording by visiting the website on the screen. I wanna thank all of our presenters for joining me but also thank you to all of our attendees. I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.